hate fashion, but I like clothes. I mean, just as a person who likes making things, music isn't the only outlet. The night of the fashion show was cool. My favorite part was just seeing a bunch of people in different outfits I would wear. I just played dress up with a lot of my friends and was just like, oh, I like this outfit here, put this on. I don't really know shit about fashion like that. I just know I like making clothes just like I like making music. But the difference between me and these niggas is that I make what I like no matter what the f none of these niggas tell me, you feel me? How much of your identity is in the shoes you wear? That's a weird question. It's hard to answer questions like that because when I'm doing it, I don't think about it. I don't think about thinking about it. Nine times out of 10, I'm wearing the same shoe for a while just because it's the shoe I'm wearing. Converse been making shoes for so long. I didn't like Chucks growing up because I always had a big foot and they just look dumb as hell on me. They look cool on other people, but I just look goofy as hell. And the one star shoe is something that I remember seeing and saying, whoa, what is that? And I really want to see how that shoe is made. What goes through it, rubber, suede materials, how they come up with samples, or if they have a weird 3D printer. Like, that's cool. I'm on a plane to Converse. It's in Boston. And we're gonna talk and watch me interact with a bunch of people who do stuff at the company. What up, D? What's good? I'm fine. It's Tony or <laughs> Matt here. <laughs> Let me find out. Okay. Tony. Hey, there's a chocolate man the at the desk here. You ain't gotta lie. <laughs> I ain't even come here to see Tony. Oh. Or Matt. <laughs> uh, let me call you back. This is getting weird. <laughs> what up, Ma? I'm Brian. Tyler. Thank they you for coming, me. man. Peanut Arbuckle. All right, Peanut Arbuckle. They just call me Brian. Okay. I saw the one star and I was like, wow, that's such a beautiful shoe. It's this bright, like mustard yellow. And now awesome. I wear those shoes. Amazing. You do too. Me too. Well, let me give you a little bit of history of the company. Let's we walk. Let's walk Let's all the way walk there. Let's walk the wall. So <laughs> that was a quick walk. So we started as a rubber company, and the the Converse family figured out how to take uncured rubber and cure it so that it would last a little longer. What does that mean? So basically, when you get rubber out of a tree, it's it comes out as a liquid turns into a solid, but it's not really durable, kind of falls apart. The Converse family figured out this technique called vulcanization. So you basically cook it at a low temperature with high pressure, and it makes it super durable. This is one of the earliest ones that we still have, early 20s, where it first started to become the all-star. So everything in the shoe is hyper-functional. Ankle patch protected your ankle, the leather eye stays over that, help the laces not rip out, and you can really lock them down. And Nike and Adi come along, and go, you know what, we're gonna start making leather basketball sneakers, we're gonna start evolving it. That's where the one star happened. That's crazy. And it's no, really it's a like, great shoe. I didn't know it was a basketball shoe at first either. I think Tyler really needs to see how the one star is made because then he can build his ideas upon that. This is what the shoe's actually made on. It's called the last. It's called the last. What size is this? That's a nine. Why do people do nines for samples? That's a really I think it's good wrong. Question. Don't you don't yeah, you don't feel a certain way? Yeah, they should sample 12, right? You wear a 12 too? Yeah. I wear 12 too. I wish they'd sample in 12. Wow. <laughs> this is the computer cutter. I get your pattern laid out here. So that's a one star. All the pieces that you need to make it. When did this get made? Last year. Really? So this is still new technology? Yeah, this is relevant technology. And before this became? You would have cut them by hand. So every, so all like shoe samples yeah. to see where they were going were cut by hand yep. until someone came up with this. Exactly. This speeds yeah. up so much like... Yeah. Exactly. It makes it a lot more efficient. You can turn out exactly. a lot more, a lot quicker, and very accurately as yep. well. And so every time you want to make a change, we can actually make that change in a digital file and redo it for you. That's crazy. It doesn't look like much, but if you pull this leather back, the pattern just drops right out. Oh. My. God. Shout out. Wow. Yeah. 
Watch the star pop out. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this is crazy. Once you have those pieces cut out, you actually start to glue them together and then you stitch them together. So we've got a couple prepped for you. So if you want to try, if you want to try your hand at stitching a star. <laughs> oh, this is about to be crazy. Okay. You gotta have a steady hand. Yeah. There you go. And then if you lightly press, yeah, just like that, and then turn your piece. I did a shit job already. It's cool. It's cool, everyone. We're still here. <laughs> We're, okay. <laughs> yep. I did nothing. <laughs> God, I'm trash. See, that's why we have fantastic professionals like yes, Mary with the most Mary amazing is steady better than hands. Me. Mary, have you heard any of Tyler's music? Do you know Tyler's music? I do you, do you think you'll listen now, now that you met him? Maybe. Maybe, there you go, you got a maybe, that's great. I love Mary. There it is. <laughs> All right, so this machine is a back part molder. This takes the shoe from the beginning platform when it's just been stitched to this nice curve that holds your foot in. Mm -hmm. so put the shoe in here, press down on the foot pedal, and then you'll press these two buttons. So you get that, that back piece really nice and hot, and when it comes out, it looks like the finished shoe shape. So it presses it down, gives us that nice form. Put the sock bottom on, and then you start to put the outsole, which is the rubber piece in the bottom of the shoe, and then the tapes, which are really the aesthetics of the shoe. So it presses all that tape that we just put on all the way around the shoe. And just let go over there. Wow. Grab it out. <laughs> Look at my shoe, dude. This is disgusting. Oh, man. I up. Then, Drop the ball. I dropped the ball. Once that's done, you put the entire shoe in the vulcanizer and you cook it. Once it goes through this heating process with pressure, it's just like a rubber band afterwards. So it's just that finished one star. This literally runs at quite high temperature for about an hour and a half. And then that's the lock. Pull on that. And it will cook all the rubber in the shoe and it bonds everything together. When it's done, that's what it will look like. There's so much that goes into this. I'm working on this shoe company I decided to start. This is another creative outlet. Pharrell was like, yo, I want to put you in contact with someone at Converse. So you could just stay creative in the hard, the hard tips of having a shoe company you could just get help with. Long story short, we just end up being partners and they're gonna help me, you know, build this shoe because I don't know what the I'm doing. I'm very hyped on this shoe thing. I can't wait to like wear them in videos and blur them out for no reason. Just cause it's like, oh shit, it's the exclusives. I never liked white shoes and I'm able to wear white shoes because this silhouette is so amazing. How do we start this? I've got this beautiful table for you. We're gonna look at some materials. We can do these beautiful patterns. This is cute. Polka dot, little pattern. This um, is cool. We've got a bunch of different laces, and trims. Wait, what is this? Meshes, polyesters, it's nylons. Kind of sexual. Absolutely, as much what as possible. What the hell is this? This is a texture book. We can add some textures to the rands here. Oh my the God. Ooh. Yeah, there's a lot to choose from. So maybe from here, why don't we go put some stuff together on the actual shoe design itself? Where's the first place you specifically start when designing a shoe? Um, I start with colorways first. I always think like, damn, this colorway would be really sick. Then what kind of silhouette you want, what kind of shape, what kind of style, your logo, what color, the colorway of a shoe is what really drives me. So what do I have here? A beautiful color fan for you. Why don't you have a look and see if... Uh... Corn silk. <laughs> Who names these colors? Snapdragon. Bone brown. Plum kitten sounds like some weird fetish porn. Deep mahogany. Dijon. Y'all think I'm making these up? It says velvet morning. 
That is crazy. You want to run with Tony some Black <laughs> is a name of a color. Tony Black. Yeah. This is insane. It'd be sick if we did uh, a light purple. Okay. A light blue. A gross yellow. And All then right. if we did this weird like, oh, I'm indecisive. I don't know if I want it dark pink or red. So we'll do like a weird ruby. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. I think it'll be nice. Yeah, absolutely. What you think? Off-white bottom. I think off-white bottom is going to be nice. It's classic. It's going to set off the beautiful color on the top. I'd say money in the bank, sneakers in the feet. Wow! I see Jasper on the streets. Take one. So we're here right now on First of the Bray, and I'm going to ask random people, what makes the perfect shoe? Hey, can I ask you some questions, miss? Please? I love you. Bye. Hey, hey, what you guys doing? You want to talk? No? Are you a dollar? Hi, hi. Can I ask you some questions? Little mama walking up in the hills looking real good. Watch. Right turn. Oh, she went right into the store. Damn. Hey, uh, come on. Come holler at your boy, boy. Look come at on. that. Just pull the whole family off the streets because I'm sexy as <laughs> What do you guys think makes the perfect shoe? Do they feel good? Do you like the color? They just look a little different retro, and the color's cool. A shoe that's fresh. It's got to look good. I didn't make this up. You know what? I, 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 my uh, sister's middle child, we were talking about handshakes. He told me what her shoe. Where is this? Uh, he told his uncle around the corner. He owns the hoop. He goes one word. I could tell by the word. stitching. That's the stitching, y'all. What about comfort, though? Comfort? You I might mean, have to jump, run from the police, I mean, get I'm, real I don't crazy. Know about all that. Comfort. I don't care what it looks like. That's why I'm wearing these. Eh. I, women sacrifice for it all the time. Guys can do it too, right? What's your favorite color? Uh, emerald green. Really? Orange. That's a nice color. I don't want black. No black? No black. Well, hey, it was great. I love you. Thank you. Bye -bye. It was great. You guys have a good one. Hey, don't do drugs. You don't want to be like me. So I've been on a journey today asking all different folks about what they like about shoes and what makes a shoe the best thing. Everybody wants a comfortable shoe. It matters what it looks like. It's gotta be pretty. But some people don't like crazy looks. Some people don't even care what it looks like. Some dudes say, I just want to be comfortable. And some guys say, it doesn't matter what it feels like as long as they look good on my feet. Good night, America. <laughs>so I know you really uh, wanted to dial up the shoe with some of your graphics. I know you really love the star. We'll probably just do the flower around it. I yeah. think that's cleaner. So what we're doing here is marking the flower stitch detail for Tyler's pattern so that the stitcher can follow this outline around the shoe. I don't know where my vision or anything comes from. I just think about it and it's like, oh, that's cool. And I try to knock it out. We can do pretty high grade embroidery as well. Uh, it's this bumblebee I've been drawing recently. That might work out on the yeah. back of it, yeah. I could draw it. That's fine. We can work from that. Where do you think you might want to add it? I always thought the back was always like a good spot. Mm, OK. Like on the hill. So back yeah. here on the hill stain? This is actually the machine that does the embroidery. We have 15 colors of needles to choose from, and that's how we create the detail. You put a bumblebee on the back because it's the art that I'm using for the album that hopefully comes out in August. Hopefully the people watching this, uh, the album is out. And if it's not, I have again uh, dropped the ball. So I know one of the things you were talking about was really grabbing some of your album artwork rather mm -hmm. than trying to infuse that into the shoe. So yeah. I think a perfect place as we kind of mocked up here is, uh, you know, is our sock line, all right? It's one of those first things that customer sees when they pick it up. Yeah, I think us uh, using that would be perfect. I made a few button-ups with it. And I didn't really get to use it as much as I wanted to just because it was just so loud and wild, and I think sure. using it as a sock liner would be great. Why are the sunflower out of interest? I like the way sunflowers look, and I didn't want to just leave it simple, so it's just to give it some life. And well, it's nice because I think it kind of pairs back with the colors also to your B as well, and mm -hmm. I think that makes sense. It's a nice narrative. Oh, I think that's great. I know you were saying that uh, you really kind of were interested in that varnish treatment that we have on a lot of our shoes. Why don't we uh, hit something a little bit like... Uh... There it is. Yep, yep, yep. And then we have the custom rand, which is done with a pad print. So 
So pad print is like a rubber pillow that is inked like a rubber stamp and then pressed onto this so it transfers the wording which will show on the final shoe. I know you're interested in kind of doing something with our outsole. So we've actually got a couple of different things we can do. Have a look. Um, the one that you see over here on the left, um, this is kind of a transparent rubber outsole. We can then print graphics or whatever you want really <coughs> underneath. It could be an image, could be, you know, something really, really simple like that, a logo. So you see the polka dot here, we could do anything like you this, want. I like really. the print. It yeah? Sh it shows better. You want to go that way? Yeah, the print okay. shows better. Now I guess the question is what would you want to do with that? We both have really good logos that could just go sure. on the bottom on a separate shoe. That yeah. might work. Yeah, sure. Okay, yeah, let's work with that. Why not? Okay. How do you feel about that? So then yeah. we're really kind of attacking your golf logo. We've got the fleur in there. And then really bringing our Converse word mark through as well. No, nah, yeah, it looks great. Yeah? Especially the colors. These are made with um, film rubber that's dropped into the mold, and then the white rubber is actually pressed on top. So as the rubber that we press on top of it presses all of the film down into the crevices of the mold, you get a really, really unique pattern, especially when you have this much color definition between the two. Once you have the tapes on, you add the toe bumper, and the final piece that really makes it the one star is the license plate on the back. The one thing people don't realize about the making of a one star shoe is how many actual steps there are to it. It really seems very simple when you look at it in the store, but once you actually break down the steps, there's quite a few of them. So what we have here is a fully vulcanized shoe. All done, ready to go. So what is your official one star going to be? What is it gonna be? A shoe, Matthew. It's gonna be a shoe. You just answered your own question. Hey, that, that, that Honda truck, what is that Honda truck gonna be? A Honda truck, Matthew. The one stars that come out in August include this purple, this light peach, this very desaturated blue, and this bright ash yellow. So we have a flower embroidered around the star. Our sock liner is all over print. Flower pattern that I came up with a while ago. The bottom, nice little golf logo, nice little Converse logo. Then we have our tongue, which will have an embossed crest, a golf LaFleur logo. Then on the heel stay, we have this B that I've been drawing up embroidered right there on the back. Photos of products are very important to me. When it comes to the lookbook, I take it very, very seriously, whether it's for the posing or the color mashups or the, the looks, the people in it. You know, certain outfits doesn't really work on certain body types and people, so I think it looks good. I think the finished product of the lookbooks are, uh, are great. To announce that I was doing something with Converse, they just said, hey, Let's do some video. And I was like, okay, how about we just be really edgy and try hard? And they was like, okay. And it's footage of me and my friends because we're edgy and try hard. Oh, Hey, that was fire. That was fire, but that was mad close. Hey, do it one more time with the shoes on. That was really close. Did, no, let him do it without shoes and just have Jasper leave the shoes on. But he just did it without shoes, so I was saying we should get one with shoes. Yeah, but can he do it with shoes? It's a 95% chance he could do it with shoes. Hold he, on, I'll he, ask him. He was, he was, he wasn't oh, that he far was, away. Yeah. Well, Travis, can you do it with shoes? Yeah, he, he was close. close. Yeah. It's not, because you're not really going to see it anyway, but Jasper's standing hey, there. Okay. Hey, man, you don't know what kids see these days. All right, All right we're rolling. Settle. All right, <laughs> Sure did. How the f you feel? My goal wasn't to show the shoe the whole time. It was just introducing me into their world or introducing them into my world. I don't like when something is thrown in my face like shoot. But like, this is what we're doing, and we just happen to be wearing shoes. Skating, wearing the shoe, doing this, we have on the shoe. I think when people see that, they're they're more keen to say, oh, good job, Converse, than it just being like, Converse, 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 you know what I mean? But then again, I could be an idiot and horrible at marketing, so. Which way are you running? Right here. I'm gonna run All right, let's get it. Right. So you just go back. Ready? Yeah. 
like to use the same people. He's just friends that I've always used in my looks when it comes to the golf stuff. Mikael, his energy, he's just fun and just like it. And that's my world. Crystal has a really good look and her personal style is also like really well. Wyatt is a, is a wild man. He has a great look too. And since I know him, it just makes the shoot fun and also like getting my friends paid any way I could. The shoes are at a few select stores and I'd rather start small than blow it out big. I, I wanna work up to that point. And um, hopefully people like them. Got that? Got it. All right. Got it? Got the cut. How do you describe your relationship with Converse? I don't recall having a relationship with Converse. Are you saying you have no relationship with Converse? Some kind of relationship with Converse? Anything? I don't recall. Golf Media! Oh. My. God.